Good evening and welcome to worship at St. Barnabas in Arroyo Grande, California, as we celebrate Monday, Thursday. This year we don't have a Seder dinner, we don't have foot washing, but we do have our worship of God, and we have our Eucharist, and we have our stripping of the altar. At this point in the season of Lent, we have a moment of silent meditation. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please join in singing our opening hymn.
reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire, with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly, it is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, 
but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who it was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Sometimes in the fellowship hall, we'd take off our shoes and our socks, and we'd have a foot washing. The room would be filled with nervous laughter, followed by hushed conversation. We'd offer prayers for one another, and our feet would get patted dry. When I was 22 years old, I remember my mentor, Howard, who was deep into his 70s, knelt before me and washed my feet. Tears filled my eyes as I looked at the top of his head. And I asked myself, how could he be doing this for me? I recall identifying with Peter's initial reluctance to having his feet washed by his teacher. There's a mountain of meaning that comes with what we are doing here tonight, even, even if we're literally getting on our knees and washing each other's feet. Our gospel reading provides a glimpse into a one-of-a-kind Passover dinner. We are witness to Jesus. Our story's hero, behaving in surprising, even upsetting ways. Here he is performing menial tasks reserved for servants and predicting his own betrayal and murder. We're just mere hours away from his arrest in the garden, and we stand on the cusp of the most significant weekend of history. Our theme for these next few moments are um, the mandate he gives, the mandate of Novum, that Jesus gives this long ago night. The new commandment is to love as he loves. He explains this is how I'll be known and you'll be known as his disciples that we would love each other. We could stay within our text and uncover exactly what this love is. In the first verse of chapter 13, the whole account is set up with being predicated on Jesus loving, more specifically, loving to the end. This is not merely a statement of duration. There's no expiration date on his love. 
no cell by pain. Rather, this love is an uttermost love. More than just a statement of how long he loves, but how deeply, rather, how deeply he loves and what, to what extent Jesus loves. How, how can I, Brian Stolte, how can you uh, even visualize this love? Love without end. Love beyond measure. I think of St. Paul's words in Ephesians when he said uh, these immense dimensions of Jesus' love, the breadth, the length, the width, the depth, the height. <laughs> I gather Paul struggled to put it into words like I do. So back to our story in the room that night. We have a couple of characters to get some attention. The whole disciple cast is present. But those featured here help us understand Jesus' love a bit more fully. First we have Peter, who is emotionally labile as ever. I have an anxiety disorder, so I identify with Peter myself. As Jesus is up washing feet, Walking around the room, he makes his way to Peter, and all of a sudden, Peter acts as if he hadn't been noticing what was going on. He's totally resistant. No, Jesus, you can't do this. When Jesus explains the significance, Peter does what us anxious people do. He overshoots, and he wants to get his hands and his head and everything else involved in the washing. The other person doesn't speak, but he has a crucial role, and that's Judas Iscariot. I reflect on these two because Jesus knows one is a flaky hothead, uh, an anxious man that is about to deny him, and the other has some sort of Satan seed in his heart that's literally going to sell Jesus out in just an hour or two. Nevertheless, Jesus is there doing with them what Jesus does, which is Jesus' things. And you know as well as I do, if the other ten were to open their mouths, they wouldn't be any better than these two. They're giving, you know, they're just like me. They're just like you. But Jesus continues doing Jesus' things. Can I get some water? I'm sorry. Again, I mentioned I have an anxiety disorder, and my anxiety has been really flaring a lot this last several months with coronavirus. And I am here with you um, out of love. So we're together as a family. I'll be okay. Let's see, back to what I was saying. Even so, Jesus gets up and washes all their dirty feet. I imagine you've heard how feet would be back then. I wear Birkenstocks every day. You can't see it on the camera, but I got permanent tan lines on my feet from wearing Birkenstocks all the time. Thank you. I don't share the road with camels. But my feet tell me that sandal feet get dirty. The main point is not that Jesus is washing feet, though. It's what he says when he sits back down. He speaks of setting aside typical assumptions for love's sake. I have so many assumptions. We all do. And Jesus goes back to his disciples and he says, It's time to set down our assumptions for the sake of love. What he does here can easily lost, be lost in the blur of the weekend. This betrayal, the violence, the death, the grief, the resurrection. Sometimes the mandate gets lost. The mandate gets lost sometimes for me too. When you're depressed, when you're anxious, it's easy to lose it. I identify with Peter. I identify with Judas. When we allow the mandate to take on the meaning that it requires, our assumptions come barreling into the Holy Week. And it comes, all those assumptions come face to face with the love of Jesus. And this love, as I have come to know, is unbeatable. My assumptions are many. Our assumptions are many. The assumptions that kings don't ride donkeys, that Judas doesn't deserve to eat dinner with Jesus. That a flake like Peter can't live up to his name, the rock. The assumption that there'd be someone there to, to wash their feet, some hired servant. The assumption that there needs to be a list of rules for us to follow to be acceptable. The assumption that an anxious man can't be a preacher. There's a litany of assumptions 
that we rehearse in our minds, oftentimes silently, but they rarely remain hidden. The assumption that I am right and those other people are wrong. The assumption that God is on our side when a war breaks out. The assumption that there's some sort of pecking order in all of this. The assumption that God blesses some marriages and not some others. The assumption that when I'm depressed, my faith must be anemic. Or if I wear a mask or take a vaccine, that I don't trust God. Jesus said, you assumed your teacher couldn't wash your feet. You assumed your Lord wouldn't wash your feet. Jesus says, what you thought you knew, what you assumed to be true, is now subjected to a new love, a new command. Amen. Love one another as I have loved you. I could never love like Jesus. You assume so. You're probably right. I assume that. I assume I can't. But on this Monday Thursday, my hope is not in me. My hope is not in Father Rob. It's not in this church. My hope is in Jesus' sized love, which has carried me through this last miserable year. My hope is not in the assumptions that I've been taught as a child and that I carried into my adulthood. So I offer this simple prayer. Lord, may I be known by your love working in me. May my assumptions about myself and the people I encounter be lovingly and thoroughly washed by your spirit. May God bless you. Thank you for your patience. Please stand as you are able, and let us say together the affirmation of our Christian faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God of God, light and light. True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now as we pray for the church and the world, please put your own intercessions and thanksgivings in the comment section of Facebook Live. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly to the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are linked closely with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We continue, we continue to pray, pray for all affected by the coronavirus, as, as well as nurses, doctors, and all care caregivers. In, in addition, we pray for the sacred in the Hall of Family, family. Gary Leslie, Chris Finch, Della Dallenauer, Cody Arnold, Danny Francie, Francie, Becky Benador, Jeremy, Mays, Terry, Terry, Joel Jansen, Butch Houghton, Marsha Bullianis, Lydia Dolores, the Chicken family, Mary Richard, Judy P, Tony Ross, Lynn Campbell, Chris Leary, and Deborah Monroe, Ruth, Danny, Luke, and John Marie. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We pray for the repose of the soul for Glenn and Lenny, Elsie Kelly, Patty, Patty, Sue, Sue Vito, Vito, and Robert Renault. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And from Facebook Live. We ask your prayers of healing for Judy P. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us, unite us in bonds of love, and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, O Lord, that in your good time all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. you. Let us safely share peace with one another. Go ahead and put peace <laughs> or some other appropriate word in the comment section of Facebook Live. Peace. Peace. A few announcements. Thank you, Brian Stolte, for preaching. <laughs> Bringing his words and heart. Many of you know Brian as one of the chaplains at uh, Marion Medical Center and the Royal Brantley Hospital. He's part of the Dignity Health team. So it's great that he calls St. Barnabas his home, at least he has for the last couple years. So thank you for coming back, Brian. Mm -hmm. We have events over the next couple days. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow we have two Good Friday services, one at 3 o'clock at St. Patrick's. It's an outdoor in-person service. And then at 7 o'clock, we have an online traditional Good Friday service here at St. Barnabas. Again, that's online live service. On Saturday, we also have two events, 3 o'clock Easter egg hunt for kids in our parking lot. So bring your kids or kid-like people, mm -hmm. bring your neighbor kids. Um, and then at 6 o'clock that evening, we have our online diocesan Easter vigil service that will be available on the diocesan YouTube channel. There will be more information coming out from the diocese on that in an email tomorrow. 
And then on Sunday, we have two Easter celebrations, one at 9 o'clock. Out in front of our church, we'll have an outdoor in-person service. Bring your own chair, wear masks, um, and uh, come and celebrate Easter in person. We also have an online live service at 10.30 that morning, our traditional service on Facebook Live. So a lot of things coming up over the next couple days. And now, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God.
Eucharistic prayer is Eucharistic prayer Diaz and David from our Episcopal Book of Common Prayer. Please join in the responses. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks for you alone, our God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say together. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is your name who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners' freedom to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. From the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We, we praise you, we bless you, you we give thanks to you, you, and we praise you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread and life, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ, reveal its unity, guard its faith, Preserve it in peace. Grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with Barnabas, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours. 
Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, Father in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please join in saying the obvious day three times. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God all are welcomed at God's table. Please join in singing our communion hymn.
pray together. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ in one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Please be seated for the stripping of the altar.